Hey, what's going on guys? It's JC from Motion VFX here, and today we're going over the brand new pack, M Explain Adventure. This is a collection designed to help you present your business ideas faster and clearer whilst being way more engaging. So let's dive into it. So once you've installed the pack via the M installer, you want to head over to the effects tab and search for M Explain Adventure. Here is where you'll find the 63 different elements. They're split into seven different sections where we have the movements and placeholders inside the effects tab, the add-ons all the way to typography inside the titles tab, and this tab at the bottom here will be the five different transitions. Everything works on a drag and drop basis where you'll drag the titles onto the timeline or the effects and transitions directly onto the clips. Before we do get started, however, I do recommend just hovering over all the different effects. That way you can start to get a feel of what this pack has to offer. And then if there are any that do catch your eye, you can just hit the star button and then they'll go into your favorite section. Now, this is a pretty big pack with a lot of opportunity for creativity. So let's take our time going through it. That way you can come out of this video as an M Explain Adventure Pro. We'll start off in the title section, kicking things off inside the infographics tab, as these share most of the elements that you'll find within this pack. So I'll drag this first one onto the timeline, starting off with quite an easy one. By default, this is what it looks like. We have a title coming in with six boxes, three of them being filled. Now to manipulate this and everything else inside the pack, we're gonna go inside the inspector tab. And the first thing you want to do if you're working on a 4K timeline is hit this 4K quality box. This is going to ensure that the sizing and the quality is correct. Next at the top, we have these in and out points, and these control the animation of the effect. However, if the layer is too short, the effect won't quite animate out due to the time it takes. Next, we have the content controls, and this is the overarching control center of the entire title. So this is where we can manipulate the positioning, the scale, and the rotation. And then if you do want to reset this back to default, you can just double click on the title name and it will just snap back. Then from this point is where the tabs will begin to differ depending on the title you're using. This one's quite basic where we only really have the two main tabs. This title controls, which is going to allow you to control the text, including the font, the color, the spacing, all the normal text options. Next, we have the tile controls. These control the boxes below the title. So first we can toggle this on and off, choosing how many tiles we want, control the tile fills, choosing how many of those we want, and if we want them filled at all. Then there's the positioning, the size, the spread, thickness, all the options so you can really dial in the look to how you'd like it. And lastly, we have a drop shadow, which is just gonna help your title be visible on a brighter background. So diving into a slightly more complicated infographic, and that is the balance sheet, where we get this really cool price graph that we have the full control to really make our own. So again, the first thing I'll do is just hit this box here, then going through the tabs one by one. So skipping over the content controls as that is the exact same as before, we'll go into the graph controls. Now this tab actually has a bunch of different tabs within, but these first few options work the exact same as the content controls, except they exclusively control the graph. So we can move the graph around inside this box, the scale of it, as well as the rotation. Up first, we have the title controls, which will control the main title and bolder here we have in the top left. Then title two is the subtitle we have next to it. Then the main price will be this big bold price we have here. Now this won't have a text box like before, but we do have these two sliders. Now, why there is two, the starting price and ending price, because as you saw when the animation came in, it started on 7,585 and then went all the way down to 2,930. And we can change this to any number we want. And we do have an exact number. We can just put that into the box. So maybe I want to start on 1,015 to enter that in. And that's where it will start. Going back to that first frame, we can see 1,015. The same thing for the ending price. We aren't limited to just what this slider can do. We can put in any number we want. So right now the slider is going up to 8,000, but if I wanted to put 8,001, we can do that no problem. Then you'll see the slider actually resets and allows you to go even further. But I'll just keep this as the default for now as we continue moving on. Next, we have the graph line controls. Now this tab is purely controlling the appearance of this line. So we can toggle on and off if we want that line at all. Then we have the thickness, the color, and that's pretty much it. That is how you control the appearance of the line. Now, when it comes to the positioning of the line, we're going to have to use a fusion overlay. So if we head over here to this drop down menu here and then click the fusion overlay, if I zoom in, we're going to see these different green boxes. Now, each green box is going to indicate a point on the graph. So if I drag this point, you can see the graph is following. So it's really easy to dial in how you'd want the graph to look just by dragging these boxes around so you can get that pattern that you're going for. And if there are too many points for what you want, maybe you only want to show five different points, just click on a box, press delete, and then it disappears. And that is how easy it is to dial in the pattern you want for your graph. 
Now we'll move on to the grid line controls, which is going to control the lines we do have here inside the graph. We can increase or decrease the amount of lines we have here. Then if we were to increase this to six, we would then decrease the offsets they're closer together. Because this slider is quite sensitive, I do recommend actually clicking and holding on the number. That way you can get a more precise adjustment. The line length, I think this looks pretty good at default, but we can extend that or make it shorter. And lastly, we have the line thickness. Graph price controls is pretty self-explanatory. It's this controlling the prices on the right. Then to add in an additional option, you just create a new line and it fits in there. From this point, similar to what we did before, we will want to decrease the line spacing. So I'll just minimize that. So now we've put six prices to match with these six grid lines. And that's the graph controls. Lastly, we do have the graph background controls. Literally, is just that background. We have both a color and a blur, so we can really make it stand out. Color can be anything you do want. I think black looks the cleanest. And then you do have the opacity slider here, so you can control how visible that is. And the same thing with the blur. So you can really see the amount of tabs you'll have will differ depending on the types you're using. Some have more elements than another, but rest assured they all work in a similar way and they aren't too complicated. Moving on to the typography section, these are quite similar in terms of how they work, but they're more text focused rather than having as many graphic elements. So if I take this list, for example, we have the title controls, which controls the main title for the list. Then we have the two other tabs that control the list on the left, which is the numbers and the list on the right. Very easy and straightforward. So most of these titles here will work in a very similar way where you do have just a simple title and maybe one or two graphic elements. One that I will go over, however, is the expenses. This one, as it comes in, you see the bigger number here, which is your salary that gets slashed in half and then split into two different parts. So we have the investment and the expenses side. Now going to the beginning of this tab, we can see it animates in with 4,300 before it splits. Staying on this, if we were to take off the endpoint, you're going to see that animation doesn't happen. Usually the animations are purely just the fade in of that title. But in this case, the animation is actually the slashing of that number. So just beware if you don't have the endpoint turned on for this, you won't get the same effect. On the out point it is the same as normal where it does just fade out nicely. Moving to the top of the title section is where we have these four add-ons. So first we have the selection frame. And this is going to give you a highlighted zoomed in selection. So you can use this to highlight text. Maybe you want to pair this with one of the other typography elements. So I'll get this process steps here, apply that on top. And there we have it. Next, we have the tile. Now this works in a slightly different way where we have a number popping up in this frosted glass and then a drop zone. Now a drop zone is just a place where you can put your own photo in and you can do that by going into the media controls, hitting browse, and then going and finding your logos. So maybe you want to show the stocks of two different companies. So I put two stocks side by side and then we have the company logos. I'll just change the first one from two to one. And then we have this cool sequence. Then we have a timeline add-on, which places a line with two ends, which you can make as long or as short as you want. And lastly, we have the trend icon. Now this is going to let you toggle in between which icon you'd like, whether it's the bullish trend, the bearish trend or sideways trend. This along with the rest are great add-ons to place on top of your other graphics. And lastly, inside the title section, we have the background. And these are graphics that you can use instead of footage when you're putting your titles. The first two are standalone backgrounds that can give you different color and patterns that can be customized inside the inspector tab. But the slide shade is one that you want to use on top of footage as it adds in some movement, a blur and a shaded section so that your titles really stand out. So putting a quick sequence together, we could put something like the gold diagram where we have a growth goal, maybe of your finances or we'll probably change the amounts. But first I'll add in a second title and for that we'll put the venture profit. Lastly, we'll add in the trend icon and I will just make that a tad smaller. And there we have it. And that's the beauty of these packs. They stack and work together very well. Now let's move into the effects section, starting off with movements. So this target zoom in is a super dynamic effect that would take you a ridiculous amount of time to do yourself. With the amount of keyframing, text placement and the movement needed, it would just take a hell of a long time. However, this just does it in one drag. So what's actually happening if we really take our time going through this, we're zooming into the different text boxes that are marked in different parts of the frame. So where it is by default necessarily doesn't work for this clip. So instead what I'm going to do, similar to what we did before, and go into this drop down menu and go to the fusion overlay, then we will see these three green boxes. Now these control where these different points will be. So the first one we know is market research. So I'm actually going to place that here. 
Then the second one we went up, so I'll place that in the middle. And then the third one down here, I'll just place that on the end. Now playing that through, we zoom into the left. Then we go into the middle. And finally, we go to the right. Now, once you've manipulated those positions, you can then go into the tabs here where you do have further control to manipulate the target with the X and Y axes. I just prefer dragging it with the box, but you do have that option there. Then you can control how much you're zooming in. So I might touch that out to maybe 0.35 looks good. For the second point, I'll zoom in a bit more. So I'll keep, let's go to 0.551. And then on the last zoom, I will come out to 35 again. From there, you can then change the text options like we did have before, and that's your target zoom-ins. And finally, with the placeholders, we have some pretty cool effects that will look great paired with the other elements. So the first two placeholders will put this footage inside this circle. Then dragging it onto the clip, you have the full ability to adjust the position, size, and the rotation, just like before. But then we can also control the media inside. So this will exclusively control how the clip that we have applied this to will look. So if I wanna make it just his face, I can zoom in to that point there. The circle controls, we can control where that circle is independent to the title and the arrow. Title controls, just the same as before. And then the arrow controls is what we have here. And what's great about this arrow is that it actually allows you the ability to put multiple of these placeholders. So if I stack a few more clips on top, put the same placeholder on them both. Then I'll just slide them to the different positions. I'll remove the arrow from the thirds, change the titles, then adding a background and another title, we can build this cool sequence with the videos next to each other. Now they will need to be set one by one. However, this does give you the most amount of control. Third placeholders does work a little bit differently. Dragging that onto the clip, we can see we have these duplicates that are blurred out on the edges. Now that isn't the intended effect. If we look inside the inspector tab, we can actually see it says built for a fusion clip with five sources. So we need five different clips inside a fusion clip to really get the desired result. So if I delete this, and then now that I have my five clips, I will highlight them all, right click, hit new fusion clip. I'll drag the placeholders effect on and that's it. If you do want to change the order of this so you can choose which ones are in the particular place in the background or which clip will be your main clip, all we need to do is right click on that fusion clip, open in timeline, and then you have all the layers here that you can just swap around so you can get the result that you want. And to finish off, we have the transitions. These are super easy to use where you'll drag and drop the transitions in between the clips. Adjusting the length of them by dragging this box here and the transition will automatically adjust the length of time. And just like everything else in this video, you can fine tune and adjust the look of these inside the inspector tab until you have your desired result. So all the creative elements inside MXplain Adventure helps you share your knowledge in an informative and engaging way, allowing you to edit smarter and grow faster. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use the pack. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head to the website motionvfx.com. I've been JC and this has been your DaVinci Resolve overview of the M Explained Adventure. I'll see you in the next one.